Hello, everyone. Hi-ho. 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 Hi. Um, thank you all so much for coming to can I take this off? Yes. Uh, Prickly Pear Productions Bahar. Um, it's so lovely to see so many people here. Um, just to uh, let you know that this is the penultimate day of the festival. Um, uh, we have a number of events happening tomorrow, so it'd be great if you could come to those as well. Um, and yeah, just to let you know as well that the show tonight is being live streamed. Um, uh, so hello, everybody watching at home. Give them all the wave. <laughs> all the wave. Very good. Excellent. Um, and now over to Leone for COVID guidelines. I'm here with the fun stuff. Um, it's very short, very brief, but apparently important until Monday. So, <laughs> you're all left with, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, if you have to leave your seat um, for a drink or the toilet, um, please follow the one-way system where this side goes that way, this side goes that way, and when you come back, you come down the middle. The toilets are one in, one out, so if you end up walking in and there's a locked door, please just wait outside for a bit. Um, and please keep your face mask on at all times, unless you're exempt, eating or drinking. Is that it? I think that's it. Great. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Bahar. This show is a work in progress and the result of one week of research and development. We asked migrants in the UK to share their most positive memories of the sea and their most negative. These are their stories. How can something so beautiful and empowering also be scary and life-threatening? I would wake up early in the summer months to get out on the sailing boat with my dad. We'd go to different bays and be the only ones there. No sound, still seas. We'd get out our thermos of tea, our cereal and biscuits, and enjoy our breakfast while watching the sun rise. I nearly drowned as a kid. I was eight. I was swimming in a local spot north of the island, and my brother and I had a game where we would dive under, touch the seabed, and the last one up had to buy ice cream. We would play this all the time.
One day, we swam down as usual, and I got my leg stuck on some barbed wire that someone had dumped there. I couldn't swim up, and I passed out. I woke up in hospital, and my leg was all cut. Since then, I keep to the surface. If I dive down, which is rare, I keep close to the surface. The irony is, I love swimming. I just don't like what's underneath. When I was seven, I lost one of my baby teeth in the sea. I was really upset because I was convinced the tooth fairy wouldn't visit. My aunt kept diving down for it but couldn't find it under all the seaweed. She assured me the tooth fairy would visit nonetheless because she was magical and could retrieve the tooth herself. She was right! My brothers once took me out on their speedboat. I was around eight years old. We were going so fast, we needed something not too heavy to hold the front down. And I was the perfect weight. It was exhilarating to go so fast, and I enjoyed it enormously. But the experience is permanently seared into my brain, because I was also terrified to be the only thing holding us down. Growing up, I didn't have many friends, and I was bullied for the way I looked. Thankfully, I grew up by the sea, and my mother took us to the beach every day in summer. I used to wish I was a mermaid, and try to build this magical world around me. I never kept track of time, but I would spend hours floating around with the fish and exploring the seabed. Although I was alone, I found those days to have formed some of my favourite childhood memories as I got to really enjoy being by myself in nature only to be snapped back into reality by my mum Time to go! For me, the sea represents my childhood and ultimately, home
get very seasick, which isn't great when you live on an island. It's gotten progressively worse throughout the years and I don't much care for sea travel anymore. I can remember the very first time I got seasick and at that age I thought something was wrong with me. My family and I were on holiday in Italy and they decided to take a boat trip to three volcanic islands Stromboli, Malfa and Lipari. I was excited to see these volcanic islands but my enthusiasm was cut short as the rough conditions threw me into such a state of seasickness that I couldn't keep my head up. I couldn't understand it. I was never seasick on boats as a kid. I used to run around and enjoy the swaying when I was young. But that day, it's like something flipped a switch. Like my brain suddenly went, no, this is not okay anymore. From that day on, I could barely make a short ferry trip. It broke my heart, as I would love to be able to spend a day on a ferry or a sailing boat. I just know that my body can't take it, and I've slowly accepted the fact that I won't be able to enjoy the sea like I used to. I was the last child to be born in my family and my dad really wanted a boy but he got me. So, growing up, he always tried to get me into the things he was interested in such as Formula One and engines. I remember every time we went out on the boat he would sit there and describe how the engine worked and what different parts did to make it function. Unfortunately, not a lot stuck, as it's still as I still don't understand mechanics. But it was always fun to just sit on the boat and listen to my dad passionately going on about things. was about 12 and I was being bullied whilst I was swimming and I was pushed down underneath the sea and in that moment I thought I couldn't breathe and I thought my lungs were gonna explode. I was pushed down again and I literally review things now and I really thought I was going to die and, and yes that was really scary. I think that guy is a big negative connotation for me when it comes to the sea. But apart from that, I love it. When I was 15, I started to develop feelings for a close friend of mine. We spent a lot of time together and many people thought we were already in a relationship. So I was convinced he had a crush on me too. One evening, as we were at a barbecue with friends, I decided to tell him that I had feelings for him, only to be told that he didn't feel the same way. As he walked away, I stared out at the sea, heartbroken. It's okay though. He's become a priest now. I used to go out for an early walk near the sea every morning to avoid the scorching heat of the day. I loved the silence and the serenity that came with the sunrise. One day, as I was heading home, 
I passed some fishermen who were starting to set up by the beach. Without realizing, I walked into the way of one of them, and as he swung his fishing line, he managed to sink his hook into my eyebrow. It was both the funniest and scariest moment, having to walk slowly back to my house with the hook stuck in my face and the fisherman crying by my side at how sorry he was. From a young age, I would go out in the boat with my dad and fish. He taught me everything I know about the sea, fish and sailing, so that by the age of 15, he trusted me to head out on my own. I love it, the feeling of absolute freedom. I got my boating license before my driving license, and for a few summers, my job was to drive people around the islands. I always felt so lucky that my job was in the one place that made me happiest, the sea. down to Brighton to celebrate our anniversary. The weather was perfect. I had planned a romantic dinner, a sunset stroll near the water, and on the pier, a wonderful day ahead. Unfortunately, we picked a week when allergens were quite bad, and my partner, Ryan, has severe hay fever. Within 10 minutes of being near the water, Ryan was sneezing uncontrollably, <coughs> eyes puffy and watering, and just generally miserable. Ryan couldn't taste dinner that night with his nose so stuffed up, and we agreed that outdoor time was a no-go. We ended up staying three hours in a local cafe because they had filtered air conditioning. I wouldn't change a detail of that trip, even though I'm sure Ryan would. It was so lovely to spend those three hours inside the cafe, just chatting and spending that time together. As much as I love the sea, it's also terrifying. Dark, open waters really freak me out. And the thought of what lies beneath is so unsettling. I remember being on a yacht when the weather suddenly changed and we were completely at the mercy of the huge waves. But after moving to the UK, I've, gone, I've grown to appreciate it massively. So much so that I actively seek water wherever I am be it in the form of a dark lake, river, whatever. It's the thing I miss the most when I'm away from home. I 
I work in migration, so the sea always holds a negative aspect for me too. Summers in Malta were incredibly busy with new arrivals. Winters often held enormous tragedy. Now in the UK, the Channel is another body of water that is connected to my work. The dangers are known and very real. But when people are escaping grave danger, they will take these risks as there isn't an alternative. I've worked with people who have given birth on boats in the sea. I've worked with people who have been shot at by Libyan coast guards as their boats left the shore. In Australia, the Tampa boat tragedy was what sparked my passion and interest in working in this field. When I was dating my wife, we used to go down to the sea quite a lot. We had loads of dates and even slept there. So the sea has a very positive connotation in my mind. It's my favourite place to unwind. Last year, I was very stressed out. So we just went for a day to Clacton on Sea. And as soon as I was near the sea and heard the waves, I just felt my body relax. <sighs> My parents raised me to rely on the land to eat. They taught me which plants I could eat, how to pick wild berries, and how to fish for food. There was one particular fishing spot I loved, and after catching my dinner I would always dive down to look for sea urchins. Many people don't know this, but fresh sea urchin meat is delicious. All you need is to catch it safely, which is easy because they barely move. Crack it open and slurp it up just as you would an oyster. Till this day it's my favourite seafood. After having my second child I was less concerned about them getting hurt. Children fall and cry all the time. When it came to swimming, my mom always said, all you need is a life jacket and they're good to go. So one day we went out on our boat, put her in her armbands and just threw her in the sea. No lessons, no fuss. This eight month old baby just floated happily and naturally knew exactly what to do. So my mom was right. This is my mum's story. Now, my mum's a really good swimmer and diver. And when she was in her 20s, she'd find cool spots to swim in with her uni friends. One time she dove off a high ledge and when she hit the water, her neck broke the surface of the water at a really weird angle. And she was paralyzed. She knew what was happening and she could feel herself sink to the bottom, but couldn't do anything about it. Because she was known to be a good swimmer, her friends kept waiting for her to pop up. But after a few seconds, they realized something was wrong. One of her friends spotted her and dove down for her. As soon as they got her to the shore, her paralysis wore off and thankfully she was fine. 
Every time I remember this story, I am so grateful to her friends. For her sake, of course, but also for mine. Because if it weren't for them, I would have never existed. My whole life I've lived near the sea and have always wanted us to spot a sea turtle. It was only when I moved to the UK and visited North Yorkshire that I actually managed to meet one. I was out on a boat and all of a sudden this turtle popped its head up near me. I was stunned. I didn't want it to leave. So I tried to follow it slowly and quietly. It kept diving down and popping its head back up to look at me, as if we were playing a game. It was one of the best moments I've ever had at sea. very young, my grandparents had a summer residence not more than 20 meters from the sea in a town called Birzabuja. Every week in the summer, my brothers and I would spend the day at that house and go swimming in the morning. Then we'd have a shower, usually cold as the geezer would take too long to warm up, and sit down for lunch together. But the thing I remember and miss the most were the smells. The smell of the beach in the morning, the smell of seawater, the smell of the cold water and soap, and the smell of my grandparents' house and my grandmother's cooking. In the evening, I would always hear my grandparents as they sat around a small table on the pavement playing cards with their neighbours and friends. I broke my arm when I was six, so a long time ago, <laughs> and my grandparents were still determined to take me swimming. So, they bought a dinghy and put my plastered arm in one of those old plastic bags for it not to get wet. Obviously, water came into the dinghy, meaning six-year-old Luke had to fight the waves with his right arm up in the air, trying to keep it dry. Most of my summer days growing up were spent with my nana. We'd swim together and stop for lunch and snacks. She would have card tournaments with her friends on the beach and I would sit and watch them all and try to understand their strategies. I learned two things. How to play rummy and a few interesting swear words.
The sea reminds me of home and my family. As silly as it sounds, it connects me to my family. My grandfather had a small boathouse in Medliha. We call it a boathouse, but it's literally a garage with a toilet, a shower and two bunk beds. I've spent summers there swimming with him. He's no longer with us, but going back to that place, to the sea, I can still feel his presence, and it is such an empowering feeling. The smell of the sea feels like home. Wherever I am, I prefer to be next to the sea. It's a weird relationship because it's enormous and terrifying, but it will always be my favorite element on the earth. The sea, for me, means family and home. Wherever I am in the world, if I'm ever feeling homesick, I just need to spend some time by the sea, and I know I'll be okay. Whether it's the rough waves of the winter crashing against the rocks, or the gentle waves and sea spray of a calm, summery day, it's definitely a need in my life. It's also definitely what has helped me during the lowest moments of my life during the pandemic. I also love how the sea always looks pretty, but it can be as tough as nails. Za uradba urasunipsa. I guess I've always wanted to be that too. At the edge of the cliffs, my eyes stretch to the ends of the earth. I breathe in salt. I breathe in sea. A lone island watches me. I look straight back. I suspect a threat. The waves get bigger and white foam oozes from their mouths. Little did I know they would crash into me with the lightest touch. A kiss from Poseidon. A welcome home. And a goodbye, see you soon. The sea knows its sister, and the island.